In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the Internet Emulator and to launch the BGP attacks, and also to learn how the BGP works. And that is actually the initial motivation for us to develop the Internet Emulator. Because initially, when I was teaching the BGP, I want the student to be able to do the BGP attack in the lab environment. But I couldn't do that for many, many years. And so eventually, I said, OK, I want to develop something which can be used for that purpose. That was the main motivation behind this Internet Emulator. Once we finish developing this emulator, we find out, and that's not the only thing that we can do. We can use the emulator for many, many other things. But that was initial motivation. So to understand how the BGP attack works, we just need to understand how the BGP works. I'm not going to dive too much into this, because when I teach BGP, uh, that takes about two lectures to fully explain how the BGP works. So here, I'm just going to give you a very uh, high-level nutshell how that works. So BGP, basically, they actually uh, have this BGP speaker, BGP router, and they peer. And so here, you can see every autonomous system, and they are going to have this BGP speaker. And they're going to connect with the another BGP routers from a different autonomous system. And they accept the peering relationship. The peering basically allows them to actually uh, send the information to each other to inform the other and that I can reach these destinations. And so if you need to go to these destinations, and I can be a candidate. And you can give your traffic to me, and I can forward that for you. And so that actually is a, what the peering is for. In our emulator, you can create the, the peering. We have shown in the previous video that how you can create autonomous system, how you can create a BGP speaker, how you can peer them. Okay, so that is covered in the previous lectures. That is covered in the previous videos. And what they will do is they will basically uh, get information from their peer, and then for this one, internally, they will just uh, uh, basically exchange information with the other uh, internal peers. And then from there, and they're going to further announce to the other autonomous system. Really, it's just really forwarding the routes and to their neighbors. If you look at our, the emulator, and if you see those circles, and those are the BGP speaker. And they can see they actually connect to this star, which is an uh, internet exchange. So here, this one, if you click on this, and you will see <coughs> all the peers and that this one connects to. So this one connects to AS2, AS4, AS11 and in our emulator. And this is these three are the transit autonomous systems. So you peer with them, and you get the internet service from them. And in the code, that's what we had in the code. You can see this one, the autonomous system is 154. It actually appears with 2 and 4, and that's why you get this one. It also appears with uh, 11, and so you, this is multi-home to stop autonomous system. It has three internet service providers, and that's very common for redundancy. If you lose the connection from one service provider and you have another one, so that's a backup. If you want to learn the, how the BGP works, and this is one of place yeah, you can dive into, and you can look into the BGP table. So on this BGP router, and you can run the bird C, which is the bird client program. The underlying BGP daemon is called the bird, which is open source uh, uh, BGP software. You can run the bird client, and you can actually uh, get into here. And then one of the command you can do is you can show all the route. So here I am showing all the route that I received from my neighbors. And each route is going to start with an IP prefix. So in this IP prefix, and originally it comes from the AS153, but I got three announcements from neighbors. And you can see this is the AS path. So I can reach 153 from 2, and then to 12, and then to 153. 
I can also reach from 11, 2, and 12, and 153, all through 4, 12, because I do have a three service provider, and that's why I got these three routes. Each of them is going to announce that they can reach the final destination, and I just need to pick which one to go, and that selection of the route, and there are many of the criterion, which I'm not going to dive into here, uh, it's not necessarily based on the shortest path. There's many other factors, including the business and including the political factor and a lot of other factors that should be uh, put into here and in terms of the selection. If you want to find out which one is selected, and you can just look into here I, on this machine and you can look at the routing table. Routing table only shows you the route that gets selected. So you can see here, 10.153 goes to 2, and so that means this route gets selected, okay? And that's just uh, the selection. And when you configure the BGP, and you can configure a lot of things, and that's going to be affect which route can be selected. And right now, we are actually going to do everything by default and from the, from the emulator. Another thing you can do is you can actually observe the traffic, the BGB traffic, by turning on the TCP dump. So one of the things you can do is you can see I can uh, just launch a DC TCP dump and to show the traffic that goes to the port 179, which is the port number used by BGP daemon. And you can see the traffic. And I can actually show some of the, this in my emulator. And this is actually a quite uh, decent size the emulator. We call it mini internet, and it has a lot of machine. I counted about 60 plus uh, container inside, and with um, several transit autonomous system. So we're gonna actually uh, uh, use this, and the 154 is here. So I am going to uh, pop on this one to here. I am going to, uh, the interface, the interface, there's, this one has two interfaces, so you can see the, uh, this have two interfaces, the one is called the 102, that is, that is the one connecting to the internet exchange. So let me actually turn on the TCP dump on that interface. So I'm just going to copy and paste from here. And that's going to set up TCP uh, uh, sniffer. So let me just uh, put in on here. Uh, on the filter, I'm also going to set the filter so you can see the traffic. So the I am going to set this filter on the map. So same, same thing. And this one just uh, let me help me visualize from here and globally. Okay. And you can see, I mean, once, once I turn that on, you will see the traffic immediately because this happens all the time inside the network. The BGP, they keep talking to each other, and that's why you see the traffic. And here, and you will see the traffic here. The, now if I say I'm going to, uh, let me put in here, I'm going to here, I am going to disable. So when you, when you disable your uh, BGP peering with another one, and that's going to trigger the path rev revocation, and that's you're going to see a lot of traffic on the internet. So here I'm going to just disable. So once I disable, and you will see a lot of traffic going on, and here, and I got revocation withdraw, and you can see the update withdraw route. So and something get withdrawn, okay? If you go here, I want to reconnect, and some announcement will be actually made. So enable, and, and you can see now the new pass now get announced. So that's something that you can play with to gain insight on how the BGP works. 
and playing with the BGP tables, look at the network traffic. And so that actually is going to be a very powerful tool. Now, without this emulator, in order to, to uh, gain experience with that, you can use some of the looking glass on the internet. And there are some available, which, it, which kind of lets you to pick into some of the real world BGP speaker to see what is going on. And you can do that, but that's going to be quite limited because you can observe and you cannot mess up with those real world routers. And this is different. With this one, you have everything on your finger, fingertips. And you can actually do whatever you want, and this belongs to you. Right, and you can change things and you can play with that. But more importantly, now you can launch the attack. Now, BGP attack in theory is extremely simple. You can just explain that in maybe one minute. Okay, here I want to black hole this one. Black hole means I want to hijack. Now, this autonomous system belongs to, in our case, belongs to 154 announced to the entire world that this is the network they owned. If you want to go to this network, come to me. And that's what it means when you make announcement. Now, if I want to hijack that, I can say, I own this. You can announce this yourself. Let's say I am AS-164. And you can make that announcement, announce to the entire world. Now, suddenly, two people announcing the same thing. Now, which one to pick? The routing, the router is going to make a decision. And the decision is going to be based on the matching. So if a router sees a traffic going to 154.10.1, and they're going to find out they match with this one, they match with this one. These are two different routes. They match this. Now, which one do I pick? And that usually is depend on how the how many bits are match. So in both case, it's twenty four. That's even. And which which route get selected really depends on the policy on the BGP. So you cannot guarantee you're going to be picked by the BGP routers, other BGP routers, and you could split the traffic with the real one. Okay. Uh, to completely hijack that, uh, you do, we don't announce this. We're going to announce one more bit. Okay, so here I am going to announce 10.154.0.0 25. That's one I. So here I'm going to actually announce 25 bits, and then another one is 154, and then this 20, the 25th bit I'm going to put that one in there. That one means this is going to become 128.0. 25. Now, if you announce this to the entire world, now every BGP router out there, and they're going to say, oh, I got a different one. This is different from 24. And they will actually set the both in their routing table. But any traffic that going to this destination, they're going to match with one of this, and they're going to match with one of that one and you win because you have 25 bits of the matching. The original one only have 24 bits of the matching. So you always win, and that's how you completely hijack a domain. So all you need to do is to have a BGB router, BGB speaker, and connect to an uh, internet exchange and to make the announcement to the entire world. Now, in the real world, there are a lot of countermeasures that actually prevent this from happening. And this kind of uh, attack, they are not a real attack, they are actually a mistake. And this kind of mistake are made very, very often. Okay, I will show you an example. And so a lot of uh, the internet service provider, they do have the mechanism and to detect that and to actually prevent that from actually being uh, spread out to the internet. In our emulator, in the future, we will implement some of those countermeasures. But right now, and they are just a plan. There's no actual countermeasure at all. And so what we will do is we're just going to go to uh, this, the one of BGB speaker, pick any of them, and add this table. Basically, you, you tell the, everybody that I own these two IP prefix. 
and just add that to your uh, BGP tables, and then you're gonna hijack the entire domain. The example I'm using is called B04, which is actually uh, the, on the inside the examples uh, subfolder. And once you have modified this, and you can do uh, this. So let me just copy and paste from here. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the so ICMP. Now I am going to just pin 154. I'm going to hijack 154. Okay, and then you can see the traffic is going to here. You see the traffic that uh, is complicated because the return pass and the forwarding pass and going to that destination, coming back, they take different route. Okay, so that's why you see that. Uh, if you want to only focus on the destination, am I using 71? Okay, now I'm only showing you to the destination. Okay, now I got this one. Now I want to hijack this. I want to entirely hijack this domain. Let's just pick anybody. So let me just pick this one. Okay, launch the console. I'm getting here. I'm going to go to the I'm just going to add this to the end. Let me just copy and paste again. Okay, I got this table now. Okay. Now I'm going to just run the reload configuration. Okay, now you can see immediately and my traffic get redirected to here. Okay, that's just uh, uh, because inside of my container, everything goes very fast. And you can see now the traffic it's get redirected and you won't be able to get anything back and it's not reachable now. So that's just to demonstrate how that works. Now if I want to stop the attack, I can remove that engine but that's easy way. I'm just going to disconnect myself from the rest of the internet. So I'm just going to disable here and you can see once I disable and that's going to remember that's going to trigger the withdrawal the BGP route withdrawal, and now everybody goes back to the original one. And they, they, most of BGP routers, they are not going to remove those routes. They're going to save that, and it's just this one got picked. But if they can withdraw, and they're going to use a backup. And this how it works. Uh, if you enable that again, and you will see immediately the traffic get redirected. Okay, take a few seconds because that's how long it's going to take for the BGP, uh, the announcement, and to spread inside the emulator. Okay, in the real world, it's going to take longer, uh, but in the emulator, everything goes very fast. And I joked about one second inside the emulator probably is going to be equal to 10 seconds in the real world. Yeah, before I close, let me just uh, tell you what actually happened in the real world. And this is a very uh, interesting case. The Pakistan hijacked YouTube and so it was a mistake, not an intention, not a malicious, because of uh, Pakistan wanted to block some of content from YouTube. And uh, what they did is that they actually uh, modified the BGP, uh, the router. And so when they announced, they're supposed to announce internally uh, to black hole the YouTube. But somehow that announcement get leaked out. And so it turns out the entire world knows that you, this one, this is a, a fraction of the YouTube uh, the space. YouTube has a lot of IP perfects, but that's one and probably is the one in that region. And so that was announced by the real YouTube. And then the Pakistan's, uh, the autonomous system uh, 17557 announced this one, 24. And you can see this is going to be a complete uh, hijack that one. You, you have a longer one. And so, and you can see this happens. 
and YouTube will immediately actually uh, they see that because they actually keep monitoring the BGP announcement. They find out somebody actually hijacked that, and and they and they know it's a mistake. It definitely is not. It's not going to be a good for you launch the real attack because once you do that, you will be disconnected from the internet, and that's that's why nobody uh, do that in the real world. Mostly, it's from uh, mistakes. So the uh, YouTube engineers, while they are actually contacting the ISP, the which is the the PCCW, and because these are the upstream of the Pakistan Telecom. But I think that was not a working hour. It's very hard to reach people. So it's very difficult to resolve that in a normal channel. And so the YouTube engineering basically says, OK, if, let's, let's fight it back. Let's steal back what belonged to us. What they did is they actually start to announce the IP prefix of this one, same as this one. But that definitely, that's a mistake. You're not supposed to announce the same, same thing because then you'll split the traffic with them. You're not getting back all of them. Maybe you get half of them back and not all of them. And they, uh, 10 minutes later, they realize a mistake and they announce something which is longer. And now this time, and you get everything back. And definitely this is a temporary solution and you don't want to do this because this is going to increase the size of BGP table. That's not good for everybody. And, and an hour later, and the probably contact with the, uh, the PCCW uh, went through and that mistake got fixed. Basically, the, this PCCW basically just withdrew that route. They said, this is a mistake, and let me withdraw that. And then everything went back to normal. And so that is what happens in the real world. We can actually recreate that, duplicate that event inside our emulator. If you watch our the shadow internet video, and you can actually combine that one with this BGP attack. So you can now actually have a presence of YouTube inside our shadow internet, and you can recreate this and inside the emulator, and you can repeat this kind of attack, the mistake, okay, and inside the emulation. And this actually connects to one of the, our ongoing project. And what we really want is use this emulator and to create many interesting disaster uh, incident or mistake, high profile. And so inside the emulator and to get the student to really go back to the time when this happens. And so they can actually uh, observe those disaster unfolding. And probably they can even participate in that and not just observing, they can actually maybe change the course of that and they change the history. So that's what I want to create. And so I call this one called uh, Yesterday Once More Project and to bring back those disasters and to design the lab activities and using the emulator so students can actually uh, not just read from the book how things work in the past, but actually to be able to uh, gain the first-hand experience. And that, I think, is going to be very, very powerful. So this is a project that we are working on. And this is the open source project. The entire uh, the emulator is an open source project. So if you're interested in any part of this project, and I definitely welcome you to join us and to together, and we can probably create something uh, interesting and the lab activity that we create can be used by many, many universities, even high schools, and across the entire world. So that's about these BGP attacks. And in the future, we're probably going to add a few more the videos uh, on the BGP and explain some of the other the features of the BGP, including the IP Anycast, which is a very interesting technology and supported by the BGP. So we're going to actually introduce some of them, and so you can actually uh, learn those things from the emulator. Okay, stay tuned, and I will see you in our next video.